Good afternoon and welcome to this Mass of Wednesday, the 14th week in Ordinary Time. In today's Mass, we will continue to pray for the needs of everyone, of your families. Pray for those who are sick, pray for those who are troubled, pray for those who live in fear, pray for those who are losing faith especially because of this moment of great anxiety and stress. Pray for those who have birthdays or anniversaries. Pray for young children, especially those with physical or mental disabilities. Pray for pregnant mothers. Pray for parents who are stressed out, especially at this time. Pray that God may be with them and that God may provide them the calmness of His Spirit. I invite you to let us sing the song, Lord, you have come to the seashore. Lord, you have come to the seashore. Lord, you have come to the seashore. Night of searching for the rich nor the poor. Desiring only that I should follow. O Lord, with your eyes set upon me, gently smiling, you have spoken my name. All I long for, I have found by the water. At your side, I will seek all the In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My dear friends, I'll invite you to bring your intentions Bring them up to God's altar and let us offer them from this Mass. To prepare ourselves let us, for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins, be deeply sorry for them, and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from the slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the prophet Hosea. Israel is a luxuriant vine whose fruit matches its growth. The more abundant his fruit, the more altars he built. The more productive his land, the more sacred pillars he set up. Your heart is false. Now they pay for their guilt. God shall break down their altars and destroy their sacred pillars. If they would say, we have no king, since they do not fear the Lord, what can the king do for them? The king of Samaria shall disappear like foam upon the waters. The high places of Avon shall be destroyed. The sin of Israel, thorns and thistles shall overgrow their altars. Then they shall cry out to the mountain, cover us, and to the hills, 
fall upon us. So for yourselves, justice, reap the fruit of piety, break up for yourselves a new field, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain down justice upon you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A response to the psalm is seek always the face of the Lord. Seek always the face of the Lord. Sing to him. Sing his praises. Proclaim all his wondrous deeds. Glory in his holy name. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Seek always the face of the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek to serve him constantly. Recall the wondrous deeds that he has wrought, his portents and the judgments he has uttered. Seek always the face of the Lord. You descendants of Abraham, his servant, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. He, the Lord, is your God. Throughout the earth, his judgments prevail. Seek always the face of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to drive them out and to cure every disease and every illness. The names of the twelve apostles are these. First, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, son si Thaddeus, Simon, the Canaanite, and Judas, his carrier who betrayed Jesus. Jesus sent out these after instructing them thus Do not go into pagan territory or enter a Samaritan town. Go rather to the lost ship of the house of Israel. As you go, make this proclamation The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, I hope that today is a better day and I hope that you are spiritually and even emotionally in a safer place in spite of everything that is going on around us right now. It is very difficult. Our, our system, our emotional and emotional uh, machine, isn't built to stay in a sustained state of anxiety. And I can only imagine how many people are dealing with this because this anxiety has been sustained for several months right now. And the fact that there doesn't seem to be um, important, important. Um, signs of hope yeah, could be very demoralizing for many because it doesn't look like we understand how to deal with this. Maybe we do understand but we lack the, the will because we seem to be going after interest, not facts. We seem to be going after short-term goals, not fixing the problem. And so at times like this, those who have the power to intercede would need to do more. We need to go back to God. As we see from the first reading, 
said, Israel is a luxuriant vine whose fruits matches its growth. The more abundant his fruit, the more altars he built. So, uh, this is, uh, this captures in some way our own country here. Because naturally, the arrogance of man is when you have succeeded or when you are succeeding in a lot of things, you begin to think that somehow you control destiny itself, you control the world itself, and you lose the sense of your dependence on something more, something more powerful, something primordial. And I hope we have not as a country lost a sense of our dependence on something more and that we are not overwhelmed by our own success all right and becoming arrogant because the bible says here the more abundant his fruit the more altars that means the more israel was successful the more they moved away from god and began to build their own altars of idols so they were moving away from God and beginning to set up idols. If you think about how many idols we, we have today, for some of us, our parties have become our idols because they control everything we think and do. And For some it's money. For some it's their own success. For some it's food or drink. For some it's drugs. Now, we have built up a lot of altars, a lot of sacred pillars for ourselves. And as a country, okay, I believe that maybe our own arrogance is becoming um, an idol. We, we are no longer depending and going to God to help lead how we function every day as a people. Don't forget, we are a nation under God. Now we're living as though we are above God, not under God. That has problems and that has consequences. And maybe God is holding back his hand, I hope not, to bring us to our knees just so we could recognize that he is the one who raised us to this place and we would not be there until we learn to recognize his role in our lives. This is what happened to the children of Israel. And these are important uh, moments to reflect. And see how the readings, the very last verse, verse 12, said, first of all, verse 8, talks about how people became so desperate because everything was slipping away. So desperate that they feared they didn't want, want to live any longer. They were even begging to die. Said, then... They were crying out, mountains, cover us, all right, and hills, just fall upon us, just, that's how desperate the situation became. Hopefully, we don't get to a point of such desperation, where self-harm becomes the alternative. I hope not. And verse 11, verse 12 says, if we want to succeed, if we want to read ourselves, if we want to move away from this calamitous um, route where we are right now, say, sow for yourself justice. Reap the fruit of piety. So justice has to do with us making sure we right wrongs. We fix the pain we cause others. So we must make sure we sanitize society itself. That's the first thing. But the second, it says, reap the fruits of piety. Piety means our own affectionate fear and respect and, and, and honor we give to God. It says, break up for yourselves a new field. So when we do this, we will open up a new field. That means we will recreate our own union we will we will we will find a new path for our own country and hopefully for our world at this time for it is time to seek the lord it is time to seek the lord at this time so there is still time god is giving for us 
to seek the world. And I hope we take this opportunity to do that as a people. And, and finally, in the gospel reading, the Lord Jesus could do anything and everything. God could do whatever he wants, he chooses to do by himself. He doesn't need me, he doesn't need me. Now, scripture tells us he could even make stones to cry out and sing his praises, dead stones. But God chooses, God chooses to use me, not because he needs me, he chooses to use you, not because he needs you, but because God, God wants to share his glory with you and with me. So he enlists us if we are willing. Now you realize here, God decided to enlist 12 men to be part of his team. And God is still wanting to enlist more people to be part of his team. The question today for most of us, if you are still there, are you willing to be enlisted in God's team? In this Jesus team. He is still looking to enlist willing people who are wanting to do God's work. And doing God's work is not just wearing this. It is being a sign of God's presence in your own home. It's being a sign of God's presence in your place of work. It's being a sign of kindness and hope and healing wherever you find yourself. A sign of peace. And this is something that any one of us can do. If you have a heart, you can do this work. It doesn't require any, any special skills or qualification. If you check, these guys did not have any outstanding qualification. All they had was, yes, I am willing. So God is still looking for people to enlist. Whether in using the social media, most of us can use the social media in a way that can build bridges and heal, but we're choosing to use it to cause harm and to cause division and to cause hate and to even traffic in all of these negative areas of human, human society. But if you know how to use social media very well, yeah, you could offer that, that little skill to God. You could be enlisted as a social media evangelist or apostle and use it and do good not cause pain and cause division and humiliate so so god is asking is willing i hope you are willing to offer yourself and be part of this team because we need to heal this world we need to make this world a better place a more hospitable a more loving a more caring a more compassionate the more holy place where God is felt everywhere, especially through us. Scripture tells us, let your light so shine before men. Let your light so shine before men that they may see the good works that you do every day and give glory to God. Now revert that. Let your darkness overwhelm the whole world. And then it's impossible to see the glory of God. Then it's impossible to glorify God. And I think that's where we are right now. That there's too much darkness. We need people who are willing to be light just so God is glorified, just so God is felt, just so God is worshipped. I hope as you hear this voice, you feel a calling to be on God's side, to be on God's team. As always, I like to end everything I do and say by reminding you that you are still a delight of the Almighty God. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. Christ teaches us through parables. Christ is a good shepherd, the teacher. He is also the shepherd who seeks out his sheep and leads them to good pasture. Let us respond to his work by praying to the Father and asking for his help. For the church, especially for Pope Francis, for bishops and for priests, that we all may be like rich soil, producing a harvest a hundredfold, 
and establishing and building God's kingdom on earth. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders of our nation will govern in a way which is accountable to God and to all of God's people. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are plagued by disease, by poverty, by hunger, homelessness, by doubt, and our suffering may receive the word of God and be converted and healed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are close to death, especially those in ICUs right now suffering dreadfully from this coronavirus, that they may know true faith and inner peace, especially as they take their last breath. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have birthdays or other anniversaries today. For those who are grieving the loss of someone or grieving the lives they had. For those without employment, those who are in fear of losing their employment. For parents struggling with children with physical or mental disabilities. For those who are losing faith gradually. For those who are finding it hard to even sleep or rest. That the peace of God may be with them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I also pray for Eddie who is sick. And has asked our, whose family has asked our prayers. I pray for those whose families are in crisis at this time that our good God who knows how best to be with his people and to bring them calmness and hope that he may inspire these two qualities in all of his children we pray to the Lord Lord hear our prayer we ask our blessed mother to help us pray as we say hail Mary full of grace the Lord is with thee blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb Jesus holy Mary mother of God pray for us sinners now and they are for them. Blessed I Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given. And human hands have made to become a bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed I Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruits of the vine and work of human hands become a spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. May this oblation dedicated to your holy name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is only right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with all the angels and saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we are pleading. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the, first, the second acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence in the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we are with the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of that peace. From me to all of you, may God's peace rest and abide now and always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. My sisters and brothers, and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. Dear God, at this moment where some of your children are still unable to participate physically, we pray for the grace of spiritual communion. Most merciful, 
most compassionate, ever loving and caring God. Your heart breaks, not only when your children are suffering from physical hunger, your heart breaks also when they are suffering from spiritual hunger. So I beg you, dear God, that you may bring this sacrament to your children and help them find strength and healing, especially through desperate moments like this. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Grant we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the price of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and sin of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell, Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world seeking the rings of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you for joining us at this Mass. And I hope you remember that you are still the delight of the Almighty God. And I pray that whether as an individual or as a family or as a nation, we will recognize that the more God blesses us, the more he expects us to recognize his place in our lives. And when we don't, slowly, all right, he begins to open our eyes to the facts that we don't want to have, to experiences we don't want to see. And I pray that we would always stay close to God because God is always wanting to stay close with us. So always, you remain God's delight. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to song this, sing the song, I Need Thee. We don't have any big here, so we'll sing. Let's sing the kindly light. Leave kindly, Lord, amid the circling gloom. Lead thou me on. The night is dark, and I am far from home. Lead thou me on. Keep thou my feet, I do not ask to see. The distant sin won't step enough for me. I was not there, but those not prayed that thou shouldst lead me on. I love to choose and see my path, but now lead thou me on. I love the God, rich day and spite of fears, pride ruled my will. Remember not past him.